Hi, I'm Alison and this is the weekly English practice from English Coaching Projects. Hello and welcome to the weekly English practice from English Coaching Projects. This week's article is about science and trusting the scientific process, despite the fact that we sometimes feel very uncertain about what we can actually call knowledge. Let's look at an example. In the early 1500s, the idea of heliocentrism, meaning sun-centered, determined that the sun was the center of the universe, with Earth being one of many spheres orbiting the sun. The idea of heliocentrism became a theory which, of course, we later improved. After all, the Sun is not the center of the universe, but merely the center of our solar system. But we were able to arrive at this more accurate conclusion thanks to that less accurate hypothesis. Similarly, our smartphones are now so advanced that we can hardly see their connection to the old rotary phones that used to exist in our homes. Nevertheless, we had to build those old phones, now a vintage fashion item at best, on the road to developing the technology required for the phones we enjoy today. So scientific knowledge is a work in progress and sometimes we have to ask ourselves who we're willing to trust more, someone who's sure that they're right or a scientist who's willing to be proven wrong. Don't forget to talk about the questions with your friends, family and your ECP coach. And of course, you can even record your voice using WhatsApp. That's all for this week. Bye. Getting things wrong is good for science. Who do you trust more? Someone who's certain they're right or someone who's willing to be proved wrong? ECP coach Ali asks if anything in science can be set in stone. Until very recently, Pluto was known to be a planet, a fact that was illustrated by colorful models of the solar system in primary schools all over the world. However, in 2006, it was found to meet only two of the three criteria used by the International Astronomical Union to define a planet, or at least a full-sized one. As a result, Pluto now falls under the category dwarf planet, and we have had to unlearn what we were taught in school. To some, this came as a bit of a surprise, since we usually talk about scientific facts as if they are set in stone, and something like Pluto's revised status may even make us wonder if any of our scientific knowledge is reliable at all. However, the reality is that science is constantly making new discoveries and overwriting old theories. Questioning established facts is at the heart of the scientific method, and that is precisely why we can trust it. Simply put, Scientific experiments and observations allow us to formulate hypotheses which then undergo a rigorous process of checks by other scientists. Naturally, however, there isn't always enough information to draw the right conclusions. For example, in the 1670s, naturalist Robert Plot found a fossilized bone that he concluded had belonged to a giant human. 
Later, it was proved by a geologist and zoologist to have belonged to a dinosaur, namely the Megalosaurus. Both scientists were working with the most advanced knowledge of their time. Similarly, sometimes a lack of diversity in the system can make results unreliable. Until the 1970s, the field of primatology was dominated by men and their focus was on the study of male primates. They were convinced that aggressive behaviour similar to that observed in baboons had been a driving force in human evolution. Later, anthropologist Shirley Strum brought female baboons into the equation and was able to disprove these earlier theories. Scientists don't always get it right the first time, but this shouldn't worry us. Rather, it should come as reassurance that outdated ideas are replaced as soon as new information becomes available. Moreover, most scientific breakthroughs would not be possible without the work that came before them, in the same way that technology keeps advancing. For instance, while you probably wouldn't go out and buy a rotary phone today, your smartphone wouldn't exist without it. So despite the fact that we might not feel comfortable with uncertainty, it's part and parcel of the scientific process, and it's what makes progress possible. Here are this week's questions. What is science? Why did Pluto lose its planetary status? What did Robert Plot get wrong, and why? What are the biggest differences between a rotary phone and a smartphone? Should we trust science? When in life is it good to get things wrong? <laughs>